It always comes down to raw simplicity and our energy grid and our water grid have been set up with a great deal of simplicity, but we need a lot more sophistication now. It's not going to come from the central water system. Why? The government is just not paying attention to water and yet it's a major problem. The Lake Powell is draining out to nothing. Hoover Dam, you've seen all the stories. So there's just tremendous water scarcity at the same time, a tremendous amount of lack of change. So lack of funding for central systems, also where you're gonna locate them, there's populations, all that stuff says we're not gonna see giant multi-billion dollar centralized systems being built anymore. What's the solution? Build them at the place where you're using it and therefore you can reuse it and have control over your fate. Increasingly, people are understanding they need to control their own fate. That goes for water, energy, you name it, food. There's just a tremendous sense, rightly or wrongly, that there's a security problem, right? That extends to water. And hello, everyone. And I, as you can tell, I'm uh, speaking to you from not the office. I'm actually in Whitefish, Montana. Behind me is a picture that I took just today uh, from the top of uh, Mount Whitefish. Once a year, we take my wife's school kids on a school trip. It's become quite popular and they call me Hans because I teach them how to ski. Anyway, so unfortunately, I am dealing with dual, dual cameras. Don't ask. <laughs> well, the fact is that my laptop webcam is not working. Long story. But I think uh, it'll work out. And if anybody has a problem with it, just let me know. But we're going to get on it. Robert Baxter. Hello, sir. It's a pleasure. All right. So let's get right on with it. Thursday, January 26, 2023, briefing number 195. Water like an oil well is the emerging income asset. James Wright. James Wright. Good to see you, sir. Let's keep it rocking. Our statement. How many echoes? Hello, everyone. There we go. Okay, origin clear in the news. We are in not not just in the news, not in just any news. How about U.S. News and World Report? Not bad, huh? Nine ways to use less water to save on your water bill. Well, let's just take a look while we're at it here. Water costs are soaring. Here's how to reduce your monthly bill. The average combined water and wastewater costs have jumped 43 percent since 2012. We've been saying this a lot. That by the way, is very bad inflation. And the problem is even worse. For example, San Francisco, right? Prices have surged 127%. Houston, residents will pay nearly 80% more over the next five years. This is ridiculous, right? Okay, we're obviously handling it. We have the strategy to handle the problem. But meanwhile, let's see how residents can reduce their costs. Switch out to a newer toilet. That's a no-brainer. Why? Because Toilets are very inefficient unless they're brand new. So water sense toilets are very important. They require no flushing and they, they work quite well. Uh, new shower head, low flow shower heads, and um, I can save money, or water rather, and money. And uh, they can also save enough electricity to power your house for 11 full days. Leaks. Now, leaks are a problem in the home. They're a problem in our uh, infrastructure, they're a problem everywhere. So here's a good little thing. Just add some food coloring in your flush tank and see if that color appears in the toilet bowls without flushing. And then you'll know. Interesting. And then you can have leak monitoring systems for the whole home. And that really works well on the housing developments, apartments, and so forth. Outside a uh, programmable sprinkler system to do the right time, do not need water every day, all that good stuff. Don't water as much. For example, uh, in our condo, we have all desert plants. I got tired of watering all the time, so it's desert plants. Keep life simple, right? Ah, and here is a gray water system. And uh, they've got it spelled both ways, G-R-E-Y and G-R-A-Y. I think it's G-R-E-Y. Anyway, the smartest thing you can do is invest in an at-home gray water recycling system. These are incredible machines that allow you to get the most out of your water. They capture and clean water from bathroom sinks, washing machines, bathtubs, showers, and dishwashers, so that you can reuse it for secondary purposes, such as sprinklers and so forth. So obviously, you know who uh, years ago I was I was in tech and I was hearing about uh, what Australia did. They had a huge drought and they went ahead and went into a big, big binge of putting in gray water systems and it served them very well. 
Gene Tully says, beautiful country, just don't like the cold. Well, I love the cold, but I love the warm too. I've been everywhere. I'm, as long as it's God's country, I'm good with it. All right, personal habit changes. Use the dishwasher. This is something, I can't tell you how many people think that this saves water to wash things by hand. Not true. Use a dishwasher. And also, don't wipe off the food. I mean, get the big chunks off, but don't, you know, the dishwasher can handle the stuff. People like, they, they rinse the dishes until they're completely clean, and then they put them in the dishwasher. That is ridiculous. All right, um, turning off the tap while brushing your teeth. These are all things. And you'll see me make a point later about this in the, in the, in the show that I'm going to play. And finally, monitor your water usage, consumption, et cetera. Okay, that's that. Now, this is a really interesting video clip uh, by Southcom. This is a, a general who's with Southcom. And it's really interesting. It says a lot about the importance of commodities in our world because this has become a military issue. Let's take a look. This region, why this region matters with all of its rich resources and rare earth elements. You've got the lithium triangle, which is needed for technology today. 60% of the world's lithium uh, is in the lithium triangle, Argentina, Bolivia, Chile. You just have the largest oil reserves, light sweet crude discovered off of Guyana over a year ago. Um, you have uh, Venezuela's resources as well with, uh, with oil. Uh, copper, gold. Um, China gets 36% 30, of its food source from this region. We have the Amazon, uh, lungs of the world. We have 31% of the world's fresh water in this region too. Um, I mean, it's just off the charts. But then when you talk about trade, trade is unbelievable. The trade uh, in the region, you know, I talked about all the ties that we have with this hemisphere. Uh, but the PRC and a lot of our uh, countries in this region are, is the number one trade partner with the United States, uh, number two in most cases, not in most cases, I would say in some cases. Uh, however, uh, to see the increase in investment in trade from 2002 from China, 18 billion uh, up to 450 billion now and on its way what is predicted to be about 750 billion. Uh, in the near future. And so I think we have a lot at stake. It's really interesting. Uh, notice 31% of the world's fresh water is in South America. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Peter Zehan. He's a great thinker. Um, although I think he's, well, he clearly does work for Langley. Uh, he, he lectures at Langley. So we know that he's got a certain bias. But one thing he says is that you, in the coming years of deglobalization, U.S. will do well, Argentina will do well, France, a few other places, because they're self-sufficient for energy and food and water access, fresh water, et cetera. Brazil's in deep trouble without, without any kind of um, fertilizer. But the water, that's an interesting story. Anyway, so I thought you'd find that fascinating. I did. So let's continue here. All right, climate tech rundown, a green business there. Water, water tech catches a wave. And there's this is Green Group, this group's 16th annual state of green business. You can download the report. So this water plan is a software firm that it consults to various large users. And it, really what they're there for is to make sure that these users don't get, trouble, get in trouble for improper use of the water that they're using. For example, as you know, Nestle gets in trouble all the time about that. So they're saying this becoming a hot uh, space. So let's take a look here. They're calling them aquapreneurs. Of course, we have the trademark waterpreneur, have it nearly completely registered in the world, and we'll start using it. Look at that. Switter company got $33 million Series A. Now, Series A is very early stage. That's when you have almost nothing, right? And uh, yet, this Switter is implementing water reuse. So we've been talking about this for the longest time, and here is the largest early stage infusion to date for water tech. And that's what we're doing. We're literally enabling the water recycling for these decentralized users. Why? Because they can reduce their costs, et cetera. Now, it's been a small space. Venture capital has not been a lot. In 2021, it was only half a billion dollars. Climate tech had 27 billion. But look at how the number is changing here. And a digital water technologies is a big deal. 
And that's going to happen more and more. Because, for example, in our case, at What On Demand, which is a service, has to have digital tracking. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Next week, I'm going to bring in Colin Sherman, who's our new project manager for What On Demand. He's got extensive experience in project management for energy and so forth. And he's going to talk about some of the tools we're going to implement. So it's going to be very useful. So various innovations across the world. You notice that, again, there's no incubators in the space. That's why it's so important, the new role that we play. Procter & Gamble, a lot, a lot of users are working on big users like Tesla uh, in Germany, but also in the US, I happen to know, are really working on making sure that they reuse their water. Climate change is water change. And, you know, whatever you think of climate change, it's clear that, that drought patterns are changing rapidly for reasons I don't even need to get into. And it's changing how everything goes. All right. So that is that part. Now I'm going to play the clip from two weeks ago, 17th rather, we were in um, the NASDAQ market site, interviewed by New to the Street, Jane King. Um, so we've signed a six-part series. Every month, one of us execs go up, and I'll probably bring people like Dan Early, Ivan Adams, people who are closely associated and will do interviews. And then they get re-syndicated. There's, for example, we know that our clip is going on on Newsmax shortly, also Fox Business and Bloomberg. That's all happening right now as I speak. So that distribution is happening. But you are going to get a, an early look at the interview. Early release. First look. First look for you only. Origin Clear provides water treatment solutions worldwide, and they call themselves the first clean water innovation hub. And with me is CEO Riggs Eckleberry and Ken Berenger, the uh, executive vice president and co creator of Water on Demand. Correct. And I got to have a lot to talk to you guys about because I've actually been watching the water market for a while, but let's just start with what is the current state of the water industry? I feel like we take water for granted. But we really shouldn't. So, Riggs, could you start well, with that? Well, the real question is what water market, right? It's okay. all one big governmental monopoly being served by large water companies and a few mom and pops. That's basically it. Unfortunately, it's going very badly. You've been hearing about Flint, Michigan, right. um, Jackson, Mississippi, Compton, California. Notice that they're all poor places, and that's mm. part of the problem. So water is actually a big problem. Why? It's underfunded. By $100 billion each year, it's falling behind. And what's going on? Business, industry and agriculture is using most of the water, 90%. And then we're telling the rest of the people, well, you better take short showers. Excuse me. Industry and agriculture is part of the problem, but guess what? They're also part of the solution. Mm. And that's why we're here. So you're really offering a private solution or at least an accompaniment to the current state of water and how it's processed and used nationwide, right? Well, think about AT&T, when it broke up, it created a vastly larger market. I mean, MCI was only the beginning. I mean, look back, it's the baby bells, the oh, whole yeah, thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So actually, when you have this big monopoly that breaks up, it creates new markets. What's happening is businesses who are having problems and the water rates are skyrocketing for everybody, they're moving away from the centralized, doing their own water recycling. And guess what? When they recycle, they don't pay for that water, so it's a good deal for them. They like it. And so we're helping them. Of course, there's two challenges. The first challenge is how to miniaturize the water systems from municipal down to a business. You're in a brewery, you got 300 square feet, what are you gonna do, right? And the second problem is they don't necessarily have the capital. And we're here to help with that, with this new concept called water on demand. Okay, so let's start with that. So explain the concept, Karen. Okay, yeah. uh, well, Riggs did a really good job of the intro, the high view, but essentially um, you're a business. 89%, um, we'll call it 90, 90% of the water pollution happens upstream at agricultural, commercial, and industrial locations. Why don't we drink tap water? Why don't we drink our tap water? Because it's bad. It's got a lot of stuff in it. Because right now, the current municipal system is set up to treat one size fits all. It all comes in, all effluent comes into one location and they try to remove all these contaminants, which they can't. Um, so industrial, agricultural, and commercial locations are the ones that are polluting the water. Now, Sometimes they deal with it, you know, if you're Pepsi, if you're Anheuser-Busch, you buy a $10 million system, you hire three, 20, you know, on a 24-hour basis, you have three water engineers that, you know, you adopt each one at a quarter million bucks a year, and you have the capital for that. So you're going to have a beautifully maintained private utility owned by yourself. That's not an issue. 99% of the businesses that are 
discharging unclean water or, or contaminated water are not Anheuser-Busch and they're not Pepsi. So it becomes, they need three things. They need capital, they need technology, and they need expertise. Water on demand essentially provides all three. Picture a miniaturized private utility placed at the, at the point of discharge. You're a farm. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Here's your million dollar system. Oh, by the way, don't worry about paying for it. We're going to own it. We're going to manage it. You're going to have a remote monitored 24 hour a day, seven day a week monitoring system. If something breaks, of course, they'll be there before you even know there's a problem. We'll control the effluent. We'll know exactly. You're only paying for the, for the water quality that you've contracted for. And we'll know if it immediately doesn't hit that mark, we'll have someone immediately coming out and it'll be regular maintenance as well. Um, so we'll own it, we'll maintain it. You'll have uh, almost a permanent presence monitoring the quality and um, you just have to pay by gallon. So instead of paying some public utility, right, uh, you're paying us. You, you're, we're now your private utility. Oh, and for the company side, what's great about it is we own the asset, we own the contract. And now we have a multi-decade relationship with the end user rather than a one and done. So from a, from a problem solving solution, it's ideal. But from a business standpoint, it is the incredible, um, I would call it asset rich model that allows us to have, you know, if starting out in the beginning, just some, but then of course, many, many more of these systems that are producing uh, royalty income we call it water like an oil. Water water. Like an oil. Okay. So, so say that I have a small brewery or a farm and I can go to you and you can help me with the water um, situation. I don't have to invest all the money, but you no. can help make sure that whatever we water I'm using a, is. The first thing we did uh -huh. years ago was invest in a technology for miniaturizing these compact long life systems that drop in place. Okay. Modular water systems is called water systems in a box. Now that's essential. Why? Because you don't, you don't want you know, your brewery taken up by a bunch of pipes and you know, uh, filters and so forth. Mm. So that's number one. And then we found out during COVID that nobody had cash. Mm. And that's when we went, it's the money, stupid. Okay. Right. Yeah. So how big of a market could this be? Do you want to chime in on that? Yeah. Tim? The existing water market. Right, so Riggs made a reference earlier to the breakup of the monopoly of the uh, telecom industry. Now, the telecom industry is orders of magnitude larger than it was. So as the whole industry. An, an early investor had a, it was literally a life-altering event if you invested at the beginning of the breakup of the monopoly. We see a lot of similarities with water. So the current water industry, in other words, the traditional municipal market with the pipes and the, and the main structures and all that stuff, is a trillion dollars a year in just, in just uh, commerce. Now. 80% of all sewage is not treated worldwide. Obviously, America does much better, mm -hmm. okay? We still don't drink our water because it, we're, we're trying to do this one size fits all. So if theoretically, um, without, the, without that uh, force multiplier that happens when you split up in, into smaller units, which of course creates greater than the sum of its parts, um, this could be a four or five trillion dollar total addressable market. So everybody uh, uses water. I mean, well, it's absolutely necessary well, for life. And crazy thing is that you, you can't actually trade water. Isn't it crazy? Water is the most important commodity there is, mm. and yet there's no markets really to speak of. Why? Because it's a monopoly. Mm. Well, that's just how, remember, uh, you, you don't, I do. Back when at t was the only solution <laughs> in the princess phone, and that was it. You have no idea. But I've heard stories. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, so, but think of what's so much as she read the history books. Exactly. <laughs> so here we are, fast forward 50 years, and it's, everything's changed. We believe the same thing is going to happen with water. It's an asset play. That's why we say water like an oil well. Mm -hmm. Literally, investors are able to come in right now and get a piece of a bucket of assets that returns royalties, shares in the, in the parent company, and founding shares in this new thing, Water on Demand, which is the financial play. Mm -hmm. See, everybody's talking about Aquatech, which is very interesting, but notice how hard it is for technologies to come to market in water. Why? No incubation. Mm -hmm. That's part of our mission. And that's right? what you're doing. Okay. Exactly. Now, with, with the incubation, now these, the Aquatech comes, but you still need money, and the finance is key. Okay. And what makes this timing right? I mean, is it environmental concerns? Is it 
some of the issues we've seen with, with municipalities and their water system. I mean, why is this a good time for water to be broken up and for it to have some I think some it's all of the above. Okay. Well, I get hot under the collar. I'm sorry, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get passionate here. <laughs> because we have all these problems with water in America. And notice that they're poor places. Why? Because they're all the way downstream, mm. literally relays and relays, and all the way out there in Flint, Michigan, the people who just don't have great water. And why is that? It's because industry and agriculture is taking 90% of the demand. They're basically squatting on our water supply. And I think it's a scandal. Do you know that in Ireland, water is free? Mm. And it should be. Now imagine if businesses, which are happy to go off the grid and do their own water treatment, because why? It's better for them by a, by a number of reasons. Imagine if they do that. Now the cities are only servicing people, homes, and they'll do a better job because it's only 10% of the load. But it's also what they were designed to do in the beginning. Okay. A hundred years ago, yeah. there wasn't massive amounts of industrial mm -hmm. um, pro productivity going on within the cities, okay? Um, this was designed for household waste. Okay, a hundred years ago, you flushed your toilet and it really was okay. Um, as children, you know, I, I'm a child of the 60s and 70s, we drank tap, we drank out of the hose. We, I would never let my kids do that today, why? Because <laughs> I know there's stuff in the water and what is that from? Is it from households? Of course not. Well, here's what's happening. You have an upstream and then you have a downstream. So who's getting the downstream effect, the, 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 the uh, Flint, Michigan effect? You're getting the households, usually lower income households, yeah. okay? But who's at the top of the stream? Manufacturers, right? Now, a manufacturer who may use millions of gallons of water a day or a month or a week, they pay the same per gallon as the poor guy downstream. Okay. But they're the ones dumping the contaminants in. And, and bus listen, businesses want to do the right thing, but they also want to survive, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, taking on a, a very scary capex or potentially um, existential threat in terms of being shut down or fines or something like that is not something a business wants to take. If you can provide a business a way where they can actually reduce their operational expenses, right, by charging by the gallon to avoid fines, to avoid uh, regulatory, you know, shutdowns, yeah. things of that nature, make it part of their business model where they actually save money, they are happy to help. And what happens is you're now delivering a end product to us as consumers much cleaner, much purer, and potentially free. The difference is the one size fits all couldn't accomplish that, right? Because you get 50 different sources feeding the, you know, the, the, the area that's being treated. But if, I, if we're catering your specific water contaminant, if we're catering our system to, to get that right, okay, the end result is much better overall water. So it's been a century bending the curve to making contaminated water. And now water. in California, they're telling people to take short showers. Yeah. But they're less than 10% of the, the load. Yeah. What about the 90%? It's, it's a scandal. Well, plus they've got you know, the computer chip, all the companies in well, California. Well, very toxic uh, waste. Yeah. In addition, we have a problem in America of no recycling. Mm. Do you know Israel recycles 90% of its water? Spain, number two, is 20%. US, 1%. Yeah. Why? We have a one-way system. Treat it and dump it. Treat yeah, it that's true. I wouldn't it. even know how to begin recycling <laughs> the water that I use. Well, not only that, yeah. the city's supposed to do it, but it's not built that way. It's not their fault. The cities are trying very hard. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, you know, totally savage them. They're, they're mm -hmm. wonderful people, but they're stuck with, just like the energy grid, it's a one-way system, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. But businesses, once they have their own system, they can recycle. Okay. They get more turns. They don't pay for that new water, and that saves vast amounts of money for them. So they're like, okay, we're good. Now we control it, we have great rates, we're happy, and guess what? The cities can focus on the people. So explain your solution, how does it work then? Okay, it's very simple. First of all, miniaturization. We have these amazing, compact, modular water systems. They're, and by the way, 100% American, no supply chain problems, so we're killing it right now, believe me. Secondly, we have the finance solution, and this is where you know, Ken and I created this thing called Water on Demand, which is a way for investors to go in. This is the only place investors can invest in a productive water asset is right here, where they put their money into typically like a master limited partnership with all wells, just about okay. to say that, right? And it goes in to this bucket and they get residuals long term, as well as stock in the mother company, us, and stock in this new finance. Uh, vehicle water on demand. So they get the best of all worlds plus some warrants. Why are we being so generous? Because this is the beginning and 
we're only going to do a limited amount of funding this way because we need the pilot plants. We have the technology. We have the, the money. We're now rolling it out. Well, you know, rolling these things out is like building a housing development. It takes time. While that's happening, we're being super generous. If you're accredited, it's the way to go mm. because, you know, you only have, um, as I say, there's really no opportunities. Our competitors are in the venture capital world or they're being run by JP Morgan. You can't invest in them. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we've talked about how, you know, it's difficult to find a place to invest in water. There's like three places you right. know, where you can, and, you know. Right. And, they're, and, they, and they, have the, they have limited growth mm -hmm. and they grow like, um, you know, they just absorb smaller companies. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to get geeky and do a Star Trek reference, they're the Borg. They yeah. just keep, you know, they keep absorbing smaller companies. Um, the idea of globalized water as a service didn't work until some of our innovation. So, um, there are companies that do it very, very well. So this, the miniaturized systems that Riggs is talking about, we know have worked magnificently because our business units have been selling them for decades, right? And we tripled our business last year. Yeah. Right. So, I, so there's no secret that th this, this works, okay? And this is well-adopted technology that any engineer is going to be happy to have. We can discuss about how this makes a consulting engineer's lives well, incredibly or... good in a second. But I wanted, <laughs> So the idea that water as a service didn't work at, at, on, on a globalized scale simply because these massive systems were being supplied to, you know, entire islands were desalinating water using a per gallon, and it works great. But their big systems dug into the ground. So the risk to the water service provider, they had to be perfect borrowers, perfect credit, you know, giant companies or municipalities that could not default on the system. Because if they did, you're not going to show up with a giant earth mover dig out, your, you, it's a total loss to the water service provider. Only through this drop in, drop, you know, drag in, drag out modality that we've created, did we create a movable asset, a, a movable or removable asset. So if the, if, the, if the customer went out of business, you, you just take it away. Mm -hmm. You know, businesses, ha that happens, right? Okay. Now, now it's not a total loss. All right? So we can do that paper gallon thing. It could be a smaller, um, a smaller end user. And, and if, let's just say they have somewhat shaky credit, it would be something along the lines of maybe doing some um, additional uh, security Well, deposits. it's a rent-to-center model. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. You're basically renting the machine, yeah. which is a very much lower credit requirement, right? I see. And you're mm -hmm. paying as you go. Mm -hmm. You stop paying. Sorry, machine goes away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you're in trouble with the city because you're because back where you were. Right? Yeah. So, finally, let's wrap it up with how can investors find out more about the company and learn more about it as the, that you're doing, actually? Very simple. Mm -hmm. OriginClear.com. And there's a big green invest now button. Okay. And the good news is that we will soon have an offering for unaccredited investors. It's in the works. But in the meantime, we're welcoming, you know, accredited investors who are interested. You know, the new new thing is in comparing assets. And this one's just at the beginning of its run. And we're very excited about our new investors. Okay. I mean, it's a very interesting company and, and addressing a need that's out there. So thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You. Well, there we are. That's the full length thing. And of course, they're going to do a lot of sub clips. Like you could tell they were like all these topics, like clear, almost chapters, right? And this enabled them and us to market with these different clips. We're going to be uh, recording these once a month and it will constantly bring new updates and make us really, really visible. We would never have done this before until we reached a certain stature where it became realistic, like, what the hell is Origin Clear doing at Market Site? Well, we know why Origin Clear is at Market Site, because we are ready for the Big Apple. Well, Ken, join us because uh, we have arrived at the, the freewheeling conversation. While I'm here freezing in the Tontana, literally, they, they make me stay outside. I'm joking. <laughs> it's dark and I'm inside. But okay. um, you're, if you don't have a hat on, and your ears would get cold. So <laughs> that's what my mom would say. There you go. Um, yeah, no, look. So I, I watched the raw originally. When you're in the moment, you don't realize how what a great interviewer she is, right? Yeah. Because you're you're you know you're formulating your responses, right? So you're not really looking at the entire the interview itself. But Jane was a phenomenal interviewer. She covered. She seems to have great intuition on kind of what we do you know we didn't give her uh, war and peace a uh, preview right we basically gave her some very basic highlights and i thought that she did a phenomenal job and um more importantly i, I think that 
that moment in time. We, I thought I thought we covered a lot of good. I mean, there's a lot of things that I, I agree we have to delve down into into silos on. Um, but that was a good first first pass on everything. I was really happy with it. No, uh, and, and it's clear that that you know, Ken, you and I really have worked this model over. And we've talked about it a couple times, so we communicate it. <laughs> anyway, it's our, it's been our obsession, and that pays off because we put a lot of work and, and attention to detail. Okay, so things are moving fast. We're continuing to bring investors into Water on Demand, the investment vehicle, which is capped at $20 million for the lifetime of the fund. And we've all we've raised uh, around seven million. I, I lost track, something like that. Uh, well, if you ask me tomorrow, it's a very different number. <laughs> no, it's moving fast. We're hitting so a lot I, of people. Right, like so, right. So ask me Monday. Ask me Monday. I have a very busy week. <laughs> Keith Rutten says we, she drew good answers for you all. I agree with that. Definitely. Yeah. No, she's great. By great. the way, I want to mention Larry Judge, our administrator, and Bob. I'll get to your your question in just one second. He has asked that we do a survey at the end, and the Zoom will present a survey. We we actually pay attention to those, so uh, please feel free to give us your feedback. It's really appreciated. Um, okay, Regulation A offering. Bob? Drum roll. I cannot say one word about the Regulation A offering. That should tell you something. <laughs> so you're just going to have to grin and bear it because uh, we are at that sensitive disclosure moment where we can't get into it but it's you're going to be very happy with how things go would that be our considered a quiet period there Riggs? correct reg a is a registered offering right. so i can't disclose the status of the the, the registration because i would it's material non-public information i know it ken knows it but we can't discuss it all right so yeah keith more interviews like this yes every month we will do an interview similar to that obviously it's going to be on different sides like We'll bring, you know, the wonderful Ivan Ants, who's been helping us in, um, expand internationally. And he's been roaming all over Latin America Bob, with the Mastermind Network, and he's going to be able to uh, discuss this. I want to bring Dan Early up from Virginia to New York and um, six monthly interviews. That's that's the contract. And then we'll review. We'll see how, how good it was. You know, the price is right. It's, it's a very reasonable deal. And we think it's got good exposure. So. Ed Campion just joined. We'll welcome here. Talk to Ken if you are uh, interested in hearing more about the credit offering, and you will soon know more about the uncredited offering. And I think that's where I have to leave it. Yeah, we're really at an exciting and kind of pivotal phase for us. Uh, and um, now would be a really good time to talk to me about it in a, in a more confidential setting. OC.gold slash Ken. All right, everyone. Well, it's been a great pleasure, and I am going to go back to drinking excellent coffee in this condo here in uh, Kalispell, Montana. And uh, my son joins me tonight. He arrives at midnight, and we'll be getting together to ski. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Charisse, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Everyone, continue to do all the good stuff you do for us. We really appreciate every one of our supporters. Stay tuned. Gene, enjoy rigs. I will do my very best. You know, I, I have a hard time enjoying things, but I'll try because <laughs> like whatever <laughs> Tom says, thank you. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Good night all. Folks. And uh, stay tuned next week. Project management. Thank you.